Hey everyone, Dr. Armagani here today to talk to you about common conditions of the spine that can cause pain and discomfort. Are you experiencing or have you experienced pain in the back that shoots into one or both of your legs? Numbness or tingling that goes into your calf or foot? Do you experience these symptoms more with standing or walking, or is it worse with sitting? There are a few common conditions of the spine that can cause these symptoms. Today, we'll cover one of those, lumbar spondylolisthesis. We will cover the normal MRI anatomy so you have a better idea of what your surgeon is looking at, as well as the causes, symptoms, and reasons why you hurt. At the end of the video, we will go over the usual plan of care, including treatments, so you have a better idea of what to expect if you unfortunately have these symptoms. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now that we're in, let's begin our discussion on lumbar spondylolisthesis. Before we get started on our discussion on this particular condition, we have to have a little bit better understanding of what the normal MRI anatomy is of the lumbar spine. Frequently, patients come in already with an MRI, so let's take a look at some of these anatomic landmarks so you have a better understanding of what we're looking at. So if you take a look over here, you're going to have a normal MRI of your low back. And again, this is completely normal, but this is a side view. What does that mean? Well, an MRI basically takes slices of your body, and this particular slice goes right down the middle of your body. So there isn't really a left or a right, we're looking at you right in the middle, okay? So to orient you, the skin of your back is going to be over here on the right side of the screen, and the front of your body is going to be over here on the left. The muscles and spinous processes are highlighted here in blue. These are the bones that you can feel when you're actually touching your lower back, and the dark spaces in between are the muscles and ligaments that connect the bones. In red are the building blocks that make up your spinal column, and these are called the vertebral bodies, highlighted here in red. These bones are supposed to stack up right on top of each other like building blocks. And in between those building blocks, you're going to have the discs. The discs are a rubbery type material which helps give you cushion in between your vertebral bodies and also contributes to flexibility in your lower back. The fecal sac is in between the spinous processes and the vertebral body. Imagine a long balloon beginning at the base of your skull and extending all the way down to your lower back. Now imagine that long balloon filled with fluid and inside of it is um, angel hair spaghetti or horse hair. That water is going to be spinal fluid and the horse hair is going to be your nerve rootlets. All of that resides within the fecal sac. When surgeons are trying to think about what are the different causes of a patient's particular issue, we try to think of the location in which it occurs. Patients can have discomfort or pain in their leg or buttock area, just their back, or sometimes a combination of both. Let's take a look at some of these conditions which can cause purely back pain. These can involve degenerative disc disease, which happens with normal aging, scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine from side to side, kyphosis, which is a curvature of the spine front to back, and then there's the black box, which we don't know what exactly is the cause of patient's back pain. This could be any number of reasons, including muscle imbalances or arthritis of the joints. Different conditions that can cause purely leg and buttock pain can involve conditions of the hip, such as arthritis, or peripheral neuropathies. But there are some conditions that can cause back pain as well as leg and buttock pain to certain degrees. Those conditions of the spine include spinal stenosis, lumbar spondylolisthesis, as well as disc herniations. Today though, we'll be discussing lumbar spondylolisthesis. When a patient is first diagnosed with a lumbar spondylolisthesis, the first question that usually comes up is, what does that even mean? Well, what it means is that your vertebrae are just not aligned properly. Remember, those vertebral bodies are stacked up right on top of each other like building blocks. And what can happen is if you have one bone that's shifted forward inappropriately on the other bone, that can cause some problems. The other thing that can happen is that there can be some slight motion between those bones that are not aligned properly, so that there can be some movement back and forth when you're getting up from seated positions or when you're bending forward or backwards. This motion is not a lot and is usually just a few millimeters, but can be enough to cause you issues. Let's bring up that normal MRI again. Remember our orientation. The skin of your back is going to be over here on the right side, and the front of your body is going to be over here on the left. This is a cut right down the middle of your body, so there isn't really a left or right side. So let's look at some of those normal anatomic landmarks to have a better idea of what we're looking for. 
The vertebral bodies are highlighted here in red. You can see how they're stacked up on top of each other. The thecal sac is in green here. And what I want you to pay attention to is the alignment of the back part of the vertebral bodies, which are highlighted here in green. You can see that all of these bones are lined up perfectly with no shifting whatsoever. Now let's take a look at an abnormal spine. Can you spot the differences? Here are our vertebral bodies. The thecal sac is in green. And now let's take a look at the position of the back of the vertebral bodies with that yellow line. Are you able to spot the difference? That's right, it's highlighted here in blue. You can see that the back of these bones are all lined up perfectly here until we get to this bone, and then it's shifted forward. So this bone here, which is the L4 bone, or lumbar four vertebrae, is shifted forward in relation to this bone, which is L5. That creates some disc bulging here and pinching of the thecal sac in this area. That's what's causing your symptoms. What does this cause though? Well, this can cause a number of different things and one of them can be increased back pain because of the grinding between those two bones that are abnormally moving. That grinding causes increased arthritis, which can then cause inflammation and then can cause back and muscle aches. This can cause stenosis or narrowing of the spinal canal. If you remember in our prior MRI view, when you had that bone that was shifted forward in relation to the other one, it caused pinching of the thecal sac and nerve rootlets. That can cause discomfort that can go into the buttock and hamstrings, as well as into your calf and feet. What we do find though is that this discomfort is worsened with standing and walking and is improved with either sitting down, laying down, or leaning forward over something, such as a grocery cart when you're at the grocery store. When patients have this diagnosis, they frequently ask me, will I ever get better from this? And the resounding answer to that question is yes. Many patients will get better with this with conservative treatment. What does that conservative treatment entail though? Well, we generally start with a course of medication, including anti-inflammatories and steroids. We also really encourage physical therapy or chiropractic care to help improve the stability of your lower back as well as core strength and lower back strength. If you have a strong core, that can help decrease the motion between the bones that you may be having that's inappropriate. Lastly, if these don't work, we can try epidural steroid injections, which is a targeted administration of numbing medication and steroid that can go right over the nerves that are being pinched and can help soothe any potential inflammation in those areas. What's gonna be the course of treatment if I have this condition? Well, when I first suspect that a patient has this condition, I take them through a thorough history and physical exam to confirm my suspicions. If I do have a feeling that they may have a lumbar spondylolisthesis, we generally start them with conservative care. That conservative care involves medications such as anti-inflammatories and steroids, as well as physical therapy. I generally bring patients back in about four to six weeks. At that point, some patients are just better on their own with these conservative measures. In those patients that may not be better, we typically want to get an MRI to know exactly where their nerve compression is and if there are any other areas that are involved. We bring patients back in one to two weeks following that MRI, and then some patients just got better with time. Unfortunately though, there's going to be some patients that aren't better. And for those patients, they may choose to go through epidural steroid injections which is again, targeted administration of numbing medication and steroids right on those nerves that are getting pinched. We know those nerves that are getting pinched because of the MRI that we obtained. Patients will usually go through one to three of these injections and then some patients will improve. So the main idea that I want you to get is with this condition, with conservative measures after about one to three months, many patients will improve. However, there may be that small subset of patients that don't improve, and then surgery may be an option for them. What does surgery entail? Well, there are a few different ways that we can approach this, but most patients are going to have to have a lumbar fusion with this particular condition. That's because we have to realign the bones and take pressure off the nerves. Those particular procedures involve the T-lift, or the transforaminal lumbar inner body fusion, the O-lift, or the oblique lumbar inner body fusion, and the anterior lumbar inner body fusion, or the ALIF. In some specific cases, we may be able to get away with just a laminectomy or a decompression. 
This is just removal of bone without stabilizing them. We can do this in very particular cases when there is not a lot of motion. If you're interested in these particular procedure, please see the links in the description below for educational videos covering these surgeries. What are the advantages of surgery? Well, we know that by looking at thousands and thousands of patients with this particular condition, we split them into two different groups. Those that chose to do an operation versus those that tried to continue non-operative care. What we found is that after one and two years following a procedure, those that chose surgery did much better than those that continued non-operative care with regards to their overall pain, their function, and their overall disability. That's the overview of the lumbar spondylolisthesis. Okay, so there you have it. You've learned today about the anatomy, symptoms, causes, and treatment plan for lumbar spondylolisthesis. Remember though, the majority of patients with this condition do get better with conservative treatment. Surgical management for this is only reserved for those who don't get better with conservative care. If you or someone you care about may be having these symptoms and you would like to have a consultation with me, you can find our office phone number in the links below, or you can click book an appointment above if you're on our website, www.armaganispine.com. I can also be found on these other various platforms here. And if you're on YouTube, please comment, hit like, and subscribe to be notified about future educational videos such as these. Take care.